Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode nine of Happiness in Higher Ed. Uh, once again, my name is John Hill. My pronouns are he, him, and today's guest, I have James Kimbrell. Um, and before I introduce James, I'm going to read off our mission statement real quickly. So in a world that can be engulfed in darkness, we must shine bright and lead the charge for a better future. As we continue to shape and challenge emerging adults' mind, minds, it is also our duty to reflect and remember what makes us happy and why we continue to do the work that we do. So here we go. I'm going to formally introduce James. So this is James Kimbrell. James Kimbrell is a native Texan and currently lives in the sunny state of California, even though it's Monterey, he lives in Monterey and it's cloudy most of the time. James graduated from Hardin Simmons University as a double major, earning a bachelor's of science in communication and English literature. He spends or he spent many years working in the news industry and was a two-time Emmy Award winner for broadcast news directing. He enjoys kayaking, hiking, traveling as much as possible, playing guitar, photography, and going to baseball games. James, would you like to add anything there? Oh, I mean, you that really encapsulates a lot of it. But, you know, there's a ton of stuff that I'm into. I've always been kind of all over the place ever since I was a kid. But yeah, that, that kind of captures the gist of it, other than saying I love being around people. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. All right. So we're just going to dive right into the questions then. So the first question that I have for you is, what was the reason you started to pursue a career in higher education? I know this is going to be, this is a little different because I know that you didn't start in higher education. So. Right. Yeah. So I kind of, both of my two careers that I've, I've had so far I actually kind of just fell into, I mean, they were both things that I was interested in, definitely. Um, when I first got into TV, I, I'd always loved news, but ever since I was a little kid, I've always loved news and current events, but it was never anything that I thought that I would pursue for a living. I actually was originally going to go into the ministry. And while I was going to college, I, I started out as a, a Bible major and then a youth ministry major. And while I was taking those classes, I realized that I was going to get all that stuff in seminary. So I wanted to be able to become a more effective communicator. So I changed my major to communication. And in the middle of all that, I also added on English Lit because I just, I love books. I love reading. I love writing. But in the process of all that, I found out that I needed to have an internship. And at the time I was dating a woman that was a, a news reporter at the station in the town where I went to college. And so she got me hooked up with an internship and I kind of fell in love with news and ended up doing that for 16 years. And it was kind of the same thing with working in higher ed. I've always, there's always been something about college campuses and just higher education in general. I am a first generation student, even yeah. though I'm 40 years old, I had no idea what a first gen student was until I started working at Cal State Monterey Bay. Mm -hmm. And then I started hearing more and more people talk about it. And I was like, wait, what is that? And someone explained it to me. And I was just, I was like, wow, like that, that's me. And still to this day, I'm the only person in my family that's gone to college. Um, my family were all blue collar workers and that is awesome. I mean, at one point I figured that was going to be what was in store for me. Mm -hmm. I never really thought about the idea of going to college. But when I got to high school, when we moved to the town where I went to high school, I had a lot of friends that were second, third, fourth generation at whatever university they were going to, or just in general, like, you know, all their parents and grandparents had been to college. And I started thinking, about it. I was like, oh, I wonder, I wonder if I could go to college. And I, I was really close to Texas Christian University, where mm -hmm. I went to high school. So I ended up going to some football games and some basketball games with a really close friend. And just kind of walking around campus while we we're going to whatever, we were, whatever game we we're going to go to. I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. Like, there's just something special. Like, you can just feel this energy walking around on a college campus. And that's when I really started thinking, like, I, I think I could do this. You know, mm -hmm. all these people that I know, like, they're, they're going to college. I think this is something that I could do. And so, I, you know, I did. I ended up going to college. 
And uh, I just, I still love that energy. Even after I graduated, I love that energy of being on a campus. So like you read in my bio, I love to travel. I travel as much as I can. And if I'm traveling in a city that has a large university, I always do a tour of it. It's usually just, I go on and grab a map and do a self-guided tour, but I've toured campuses all over the country and overseas because oh, I just, I like to see the architecture and check out libraries and football fields. And there's just something kind of magical almost it may sound goofy, but mm -hmm. there's something kind of magical about being on a college campus. And one day, um, unbeknownst to any of my friends, I was actually considering leaving TV. And one day, a friend of mine that used to work in the housing department at Cal State Monterey Bay, she texted me and she asked, would you ever consider leaving TV? And I was like, wait, this is so random because I haven't talked to anybody, not even <laughs> like my family about the mm -hmm. idea of leaving TV, even though I was considering it. And I was like, oh, maybe, like, why do you ask? And she sent me a link to the job posting and she's like, well, we've got this position open and I think you'd be great for it. And it was a position doing marketing for student housing and residential life. And at that point, I'd been also doing marketing on the side for uh, a board sports company based out of Santa Cruz, California. And I'd also been doing social media marketing and photography for my church. So I've been doing that stuff on the side for about five years at that point mm -hmm. and taking classes and stuff online just to learn as much as I could, um, learning stuff from the marketing people at the board sports company that I talked about. And I was like, wow, like this would be really cool. You know, it could kind of take the marketing stuff that I'm already interested in and the fact that I love universities and just like bring them together. Put it together. Yeah. 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 And, you know, the fact that it was literally just down the street from where I'd been living, I was like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll check this out. And so I applied for the job and, you know, I went on and did, did the interview and I don't know, I just kind of, it just felt right. Mm -hmm. And eventually I, I ended up with a job and, you know, fell in love with working at a university and, the, the best part of it by far was working with students on a daily basis. I don't know if the, the person that had the, the job before me went about the job the same way that I did, but I tried to collaborate with students as much as possible mm -hmm. because I love seeing, you know, the, when they would come up with an idea or when something would click with them and just the, the excitement that they get on their face. It's like, oh, this is, this is amazing. And I was just, it was a lot of really good work that we did, mm -hmm. but it was fun at the same time. Like every day, it was just, it was a blast. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's kind of a, a long roundabout <laughs> way of saying that's how I get, <laughs> how I got there, but. Got you. No, no, that's awesome. And I mean, I James wouldn't say this out loud to everyone, but uh, I actually was in James' interview for the student part of it. Um, I was I was sitting in the sitting in the back when you were you know, and I was firing away asking you questions. So I kind of knew at that point that like you were really interested. And not that I knew the backstory of like going to universities and stuff, but I knew that you were very interested in the position, and I knew that you could do a lot of uh, a lot of amazing work. And then you know, you got the position, and then you did an amazing work. <laughs> well, so. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up that, that student interview portion because I was involved in a lot of the, the different interviews of other candidates that came on after I did. And I thought so much of that student interview portion. I always made sure if I was available, which I tried to set my calendar up to be available, I always try to make sure that I led or was there to facilitate because it was really, mm -hmm. it was for the students. Yeah. But I, these people that were being brought on for positions are there to support and work with the students. So their input to me, their input 
was more important than you know pretty much anyone else mm-hmm. other than you know the 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 very higher ups because like i said you know a, a, a community director coming in like they're there to support and represent the students so if the students are like nah i'm not i'm not feeling this person uh, maybe we should we should listen to the students and and really take their perspective into account mm-hmm. um, so that yeah that that part of the whole interview day for new candidates I thought was was something very special and I always try to make sure that we had plenty of students to fill that room because I wanted everyone to know how the students you know at CSUMB mm-hmm. felt about a candidate yeah, and I remember the uh, the summer right before I left to to go to to go to grad school. I remember you you had emailed me and was like, "Hey, we got this interview for this candidate. Like, <laughs> I want you to be there." <laughs> um, so yeah, no, that I I didn't even know that, and now that makes a ton of sense on why I went to those three. I think it was three or four interviews, and I was a student still. So wow, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so moving on. Um, there's a load of question here but what makes you happy? And that's one thing from higher ed and then one personal thing. The one thing from higher ed, I mean, it really kind of breaks out into a bunch of different things, but to, to keep it short and, and sweet because I'm, I'm a bit of a talker. Uh, <laughs> the, the thing in higher ed that makes me happy is the students. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, not saying that to have a cookie cutter uh response but yeah that was by far the best part of my job um like i said when i was talking about working with students just the look on their face when they would have an idea or um something would click uh and the excitement that they would have was amazing Mm -hmm. and i did my best to even though my job was to be there and update the website and do social media and put together tables for open campus and stuff like that, I still made a point to be an advocate for students in any way that I could. And it would make my day, my week, my month, whenever students would come to me as the marketing guy (laughs) they would come to me because they knew that i cared when they had a problem and that i would do whatever i could to help them out Mm -hmm. Um, and there were there were times whenever there were decisions that were being made um, that i did not agree with and i let it be known because something was coming down the the pipe that I did not think was in the best interest of students um, or, you know, they may not, may not have gotten um, full disclosure in a timely manner. And I would do whatever I could to help out students and make sure that they weren't getting the short end of the stick mm-hmm. um, because that's why we're, we're there. Mm-hmm full stop. We're there for the students to ensure that they, one, obviously get the best education possible and also make sure that they are represented and seen and cared for and know that, you know, because obviously there, there are students that come in that, you know, I was, I was lucky, you know, I, I have a family and they supported me not everyone had that. Mm-hmm. And I've had a lot of friends and coworkers uh, over the years that, you know, came from backgrounds that, that didn't have that. And I've seen this stuff um, in action. And I want to be that person. If, you know, no one else, I want to be that person to let a student know that, hey, you know, people do care people care what happens to you people care that you succeed and yeah i mean like i said that that's that was definitely the thing that made me happy about working in higher ed was just the students Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what was the second part of the question? Something about uh, per one personal thing that makes you happy. Personal thing that makes me happy. Oh, that's tough because I, like I said at the the outset, there's a lot of things that I'm in, in, interested in. Yeah, uh, craft beer, bourbon, baseball, but probably it all probably comes down to music. I love music. Music is a huge part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, just everything from just listening to music on Spotify, going to live shows, even if it like whether it be a huge artist or just a, a few nights ago, I went out with my brother and we just saw some young dude playing at a bar. You know, he's probably 20, 21 and he's just getting started, but he was really good. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, it's been almost a year and a half since any of us have seen live music. So that was an added bonus, mm -hmm. but, you know, so seeing live artists playing music myself, um, yeah, there's just, I don't know. I mean, I feel like most people agree there's, you know, music just touches the soul. And if someone says like, eh, you know, music is all right. I'm not really that into it. I don't know if I trust that person. <laughs> I'm, I'm immediately suspicious. Like, who are you, sir? Are you, are you a body snatcher? Are you a million? like, who doesn't love music? Got you. Uh, yeah. So music is definitely probably the number one thing that, that makes me happy. Like, a, yeah. Yeah, no. And honestly, I think that like, even though that like, when you say that like working in higher ed, like the students are the one thing that like, that makes you happy. I think that it can be seen as a cookie cutter response, but I also think that it is like, it's just like how you broke it down. Like it's, it's so multifaceted, you know, it's not necessarily just one thing. It's not just like this overall arching, you know, students. It's like the, the little interactions that you have, you know, like showing them that you care, showing them that you're an advocate for them, you know, and saying that when something comes down from the top that you're like, nah, I don't think this is going to work. Or I don't think that it's not going to be in the best interest of the students or, you know, having those interactions. Cause like, I remember, um, just working with you specifically and you were just like all right I got all these good ideas and like we just need to make them happen and I was like cool like let's make this happen because like you know it's, <laughs> it's different when you have someone that is new that just wants to learn as much as possible as well as you know do so much and you know like things that the ways that things that, that were done in the past you know you were like let's do something different and like let's try something new and it was just like seeing that energy like I mean, as a student, I was like, all right, this is fun. This is cool. Like, we're going to make some, we're going to make something happen, you know? <laughs> so I think that, I think that's awesome. And yeah, I think I will definitely agree with you. I think music is, I think even when you think about music and you, I know you had mentioned baseball, it's like that, that connection with individuals, you know, like it, it, everyone is there watching the same thing. Everyone is there listening to the same thing. Um, and yeah, I would agree. 100% agree. It's kind of like, I don't really like music. And you're like, okay <laughs> you know like cool just, nice talking to you <laughs> you just sit there and you're Weirdo. Like, i mean being someone that also that loves music like i i even at work like i'll probably i'm there for eight hours and if i don't have meetings i'm listening to music eight hours a day you know and it's yeah. just one of those things that it's it's always in the background and it's always um it's just awesome like i don't know how to describe it like you know how you just how you were talking about it so but no thank you thank you for that yeah. Um, so what keeps you resilient in the face of some of the challenges um, you've faced? I know that like in the budget or in the cri or crisis, geez, in the pandemic, <laughs> um, you have like budget cuts, stress from pandemic, et cetera. Oh man, there's, are you looking for one thing or multiple things or? Um, whatever, whatever makes you, whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one, um, uh... This, this is, there was a lot of different things that had to kind of help me get through this because, um, you know, in the interest of full disclosure, during the pandemic, I was uh, laid off from Cal State Monterey Bay and it was, it was rough, you know, that's never happened to me before. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I've always been, you know, secure in whatever job that I've had. And, but there was, there was still something whenever the whole thing hit, I just, I kind of knew in the back of my mind that eventually layoffs were going to happen. 
And I asked my supervisor whenever they first said that, you know, they were going to start having students move out. I, I knew, and I don't know if it was just an intuition kind of thing or from working in news for years and seeing how uh, economic downturns affect um, workers in their, in their jobs. I just, I knew that layoffs were going to come, but when I started asking about it, I kept being told like, oh, that's, you know, that's not going to, no one's talking about that. That's not going to happen. Um, and then it eventually did. And when they said that it was going to happen, I mean, I'm the marketing guy or I was the marketing guy. There are other people that I know that, you know, need to like facilities, you know, people that are keeping the buildings running and keeping them from falling apart. And the, you know, community, community directors that are really working with the RAs and the students and dealing with situations. I totally understand that those are the essential positions, um, even though I also firmly believe that not just anybody can do marketing. You can learn how to, you know, be decent at it, but, you know, there is a lot of skill to it, but I also understand that those positions are essential. Um, so when it happened, I was kind of like, okay, well, I kind of saw this coming. So I, you know, I was preparing in, in different ways, um, but things that I did to kind of, you know, help deal with that. Uh, I had started, I used to be a runner several years ago and I had a lot of injuries. Some of them were old injuries from playing sports when I was younger. Um, but after running for several years, I had a lot of injuries crop up and I had to stop. And when the pandemic hit and everything shut down, I was like, you know what? I can, I think I can go trail running. I want to, I want to try to get back into running. And so I was doing that on the daily and that helped out a ton. Uh, like I mentioned before, you know, the one thing that makes me happy is music, um, playing music and practicing guitar every day, um, just hopping on zoom or FaceTime with friends. And also, um, I, I'm a Christian. And my faith is a very big part of my life. Uh, it's the biggest part of my life. So, you know, I was routinely praying and I'm not saying that that made things easy and made things better because that's being a Christian doesn't make things easy. It doesn't make things better. A part of it is knowing that things are going to be hard. Mm -hmm. um, life is not easy for anybody. Um, but just having that to, to fall back on and friends from church, you know, hopping on, on FaceTime with them and, you know, maybe, maybe it could be something as simple as just playing, uh, Jackbox games and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Or, um, I mean, I, I mentioned, I'm a big fan of craft beer and, you know, going on and doing a, a happy hour with, with friends um, all of those things helped out a lot, but, uh, the, the two that, that helped out the most were, you know, my, my faith and my friends from church and, um, music. And those were two things that really helped sustain me throughout all this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, right now I'm still currently unemployed, but that is going to be changing very soon. Um, but I, I did use these last few weeks of being unemployed to um, take a trip. It was kind of unexpected, to, but to take a trip to help my family move from where they were in Kentucky to Texas, which is where I'm sitting right now. Um, <laughs> so I might be the sweatiest guest that you've had on so far. Um, but, you know, that's something else that's, that's helped sustain me is, is family. You know, I've mm -hmm spent a lot more time FaceTiming with, with my parents than, you know, ever before during all this. Um, and as soon as, you know, I was able to get the vaccine and my parents were vaccinated, um, they needed help uh, to, to do this big, huge move. And I, you know, jumped on a chance, uh, bought a ticket, didn't even tell them until after I got the ticket and flew in and, 
help them. We hooked up a couple of big old trailers to their pickup trucks and drove uh, from Kentucky to Texas. Um, but, you know, I wanted to be here for my family because like mm-hmm. I said, that's, that's another thing that really helped me get through this is just you know, being able to, to talk to my, my parents whenever, you know, I just really felt like, you know, no one else could really understand what I was going through. I could always still, you know, FaceTime, FaceTime my mom or my dad and be like, Hey, I'm kind of, <laughs> things are kind of rough right now. And yeah. they were, they were there for me. And it's it, honestly, it sounds like from from the way that you were talking about a lot of a lot of that is that it wasn't just one sole thing that got you that got you through it or that you know that helped you in those 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 tough moments. It kind of seemed like there was a lot of things you know that you could yeah. go you could rely on, and I think that was the one thing that um, during the pandemic is specifically that like you know that kept most of us resilient is the ability to rely on multiple things. It wasn't just like, you know, beforehand, it was like that one, one or two things that would get you through it all. Cause it was just like a constant, constant thing that was happening. But then once the pandemic hit and like, you kind of got to take a step back, you know, you got to see how everything, all those different things that, you know, that you might've like taken a step back from, like, you know, like you had mentioned, like maybe not talking to your parents or FaceTiming them as frequently, but like now you have the opportunity or the, abil- the ability to do that, you know, and how that, that helped you out so much, I think is, is a key thing, you know, and just remembering to do that afterwards, <laughs> you know, um, cause yeah, I think that, I think that as much as we're, as much as it was abruptly beforehand, you know, right before the, right as the pandemic started, I think that it's going to be a different transition going back into like how things, the, I guess the quote unquote normal, you know, so, but I think that's, that's awesome. And it's really cool that you're, it's really cool that your parents were there and that you have the ability to even, you know, travel to, to Tennessee to help them move. So Kentucky, sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, Kentucky, my, wow. That was bad. That was bad. <laughs> but uh, cool. <laughs> um, so what are some of the ways that you practice self-care to stay on your A game? I know you have, you had mentioned a couple, but. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I keep going back to music because like I said, that's a, that's a big part of my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just constantly listening to music, um, playing music. But the other really big thing is just being around people, which the pandemic definitely made that difficult because um, you know, being around people is such a big part of my life. And it was interesting because just about everyone in the department at CSUMB, oddly enough, the majority of people on that staff were all introverts. They were really good at stepping up for big events, but they would all admit like once big events were done, they were wiped. And I was the exact opposite when we would have, you know, multiple days in a row of orientation and stuff. And as soon as we were done for the day, I'm like, all right, cool. What are we doing now? Are we going to go out for drinks? What are we? And everyone's just like, oh, James, <laughs> chill out. We need rest. I'm like, no, but like, we're already out. We might as well go do something. <laughs> and so when the pandemic hit and I couldn't, you know, go and have drinks or go to a baseball game or, or whatever, just go to the beach. That was, was rough. And I actually started getting texts from people that, from people from CSUMB and just other friends. And they're like, Hey, like, are you okay? Cause <laughs> we know you're, cause I, I live alone. You know, I, I have a two bedroom apartment. I thankfully I, cause I love being out and around people when I'm out, I'm out and I can stay out all day long. But when I get home, I want to have my own space and I do, which is great most of the time, but during a pandemic, when you're stuck in that spot, it was a nightmare. And so I was getting people checking up on me a lot. Cause they're like, well, we know <laughs> you're probably really struggling right now. Um, but you know, FaceTime, FaceTime did help. And then once people started kind of, you know, a a few months in, people started coming up with the whole idea of quarantine bubbles and, you know, just sticking with, you know, a few people that you're close to that, you know, that they're not going out and doing something stupid and they know you're not going out and doing something stupid, Mm -hmm. you know, you can go over and like chill in their driveway or something like that. And 
you know, that, that was good being able to, to have, um, even just a, you know, a handful of people that I could still see in person. Um, because I just, I really, I mean, I'm that stereotypical extrovert, you know, I get my energy from being around people. Mm -hmm. And so when I was actually able to be around the people again, that, that helped tremendously because those, those first couple of months, you know, whenever everything was just locked down, you can't go anywhere, no one's doing anything. And I was stuck basically going into my front porch and to my back porch. And then on trail run, that was, that was killer. But, you know, when I was finally able to be around people again, um, on a limited basis, that really, you know, helped Mm -hmm. sustain um and i mean i was even i was even lucky enough i don't know if this is okay to (laughs) to say but i was even able i was lucky enough um when you graduated uh you you remembered me and you brought me a (laughs) a a really tasty craft beer Uh, yeah i was i was stoked about that That, that meant a lot to me I knew for I knew for a fact right before I right before I left uh, Western Illinois that they had opened Forgatonia, um, which is a, a small. And when we say small, like we're talking like you could probably fit. I, I feel like it's probably the size of my apartment. Honestly, how big their 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 venue is, and yeah. you know, it's, it's it's really small. And they had uh, they had a couple of beers that I was like, you know, I see James on Instagram posting all the time. <laughs> you know, he's got he's got to have. If I bring him something, it'll probably make his day. Um, so I, I packed a, I packed a little cooler, you know, <laughs> and uh, and it traveled with me from from Illinois all the way to California. And yeah, that was the first thing, first thing I wanted to do. I was like, all right, I said I've I've seen that James has gone outside a couple of times with some people. Like let's let's uh, let's make it happen. And uh, so yeah, totally. You can t- I I one hundred percent appreciate you bringing that up. So. <laughs> Yeah, dude, you don't like, you don't know how much that, that meant to me. And I like, as after, after, I don't know if it was like right after you came over or before you came over, I texted Nat, one of your previous guests, Yep. Uh, Nat and I are super close. Um, I texted Nat, I was like, OMG, you're never going to believe <laughs> <laughs> John, John brought a beer. He remembered me and he brought a beer. So yeah, that was, that meant a ton. Yeah. And, and I, mean, I, I don't even, oh. I honestly don't even remember. I know I took a picture of it. I could probably find it because I take it. I'm a dork and I take pictures of all of my beer, but <laughs> I, I could find a picture, but I don't remember what it was, but just sitting down and having a beer with you. That's, you know, one of the things that I love about good craft beer is just like sitting down and and getting to socialize with people because it all goes back to me being around people yeah so i mean you could put coffee in there and it'd probably you know still be the same but i would be even more wired um (laughs) but yeah you know you you put that craft beer and you know you're gonna have a good time talking with with good people yeah, no, I know. And I remember <laughs> I'll even since you since you brought that up, I'll I'll uh, I'll say something from that interaction. And so I remember I broke your chair. <laughs> 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 I, <laughs> uh, I, I I have nothing nothing to say about that, but I just thought since uh, since you brought it up, I thought I'd tell everyone that I that I broke your chair. <laughs> um, well, and to be fair, <laughs> that chair, that chair was the first chair I bought whenever I moved into that apartment. <laughs> I'd gotten rid of a bunch of stuff. There was just uh-huh. so much stuff that was I finally had the chance to decorate my apartment exactly the, the way I wanted to. And like, I'm interested in stuff like that. So, I, you know, I was very particular. I took my time. So I was tired of sitting on the floor while I was like trying to find exact, the exact furniture that mm-hmm. I wanted because I decorated in what's called mid-century modern style. So I was just like taking my time, finding exactly what I wanted. So I went to Home Goods and bought two wooden folding chairs. I think it cost me like 20 bucks for the two of them. And I sat in those for like a month and a half until I found everything that I wanted and I just bought everything. And then those chairs went and sat on my balcony and they sat out there for a solid two years 
until eventually I got something else to go on the balcony and then they went in my garage. So -hmm. those chairs hadn't been touched in probably (laughs) almost a year. And then you get there and I'm like wiping off cobwebs. I'm like, "Ah, I'm sorry, I don't have anything else that I can get down here. And yeah, so they were all weathered and just, (laughs) they'd seen better days. And I, and I appreciate you bringing that up because when I, when I, <laughs> when I basically fell on my ass <laughs> in, that, um, in that moment, I remember you saying verbatim everything that you just said. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't tell at that moment if you were being like, if you're being truthful, which I know you were being, being very truthful <laughs> about that. Or if you were just like, please just like make sure he doesn't leave here. Like all like mad at me. Like you made me sit in the chair that was going to break. <laughs> oh, that's... I should have said that. I'm like, yeah, haha, that was the joke, everybody. <laughs> uh, but I, it's nice to know that we can at least laugh about that. So, <laughs> um, but the last, the last question that I have for you is what is one piece of advice you live by in your practice or in your day-to-day life? Um, this probably goes back to what I was talking before about to do with, you know, my faith being uh, an integral part of my life. Um, and I think it's just to, to love people. Um, you know, we were, we were commanded to love people as we have been loved. And that is at all times, in all situations, um, love everybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's something that, that has really been put on my heart. Um, and I, I hope it, it shows, you know, on a daily basis. I know everyone has bad days and, you know, we can, we can all get kind of, kind of grumpy at times, but just to, to love people, that's what I try to do. Uh, and that, that goes, that directly feeds into what I was talking about, you know, representing students and making sure they, um, feel seen and cared for. Mm -hmm. That's because I love people so much and, you know, whatever I can do to, um, you know, bridge any kind of gap um, to make a difference in someone's life. Uh, I want to do that because, you know, I just, I try to love people every day in every situation. Yeah. And I, like I said, I, I hope that is something that, that is, is seen and is evident. Um, because that, that's really where my heart is is loving people nice i really don't have anything to say after that that was beautiful um (laughs) um, and i appreciate you i appreciate you for saying that and i also i also appreciate you for for agreeing to do this um i know there was a little bit of scheduling um you know like i like i had told uh leanne last week since i was on vacation i completely completely forgot like I had like this to-do list and then I just had forgot about you know sending you a text <laughs> message and then yesterday you're like we still doing this <laughs> uh, so, I, so I appreciate you for for that and I, I just want to say thank you again for 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 being here uh and for agreeing to do this um so thank you yeah of course this is great I love doing this this is awesome yeah so uh, yeah, before we before we wrap up, uh, I still since like I said, everyone, I'm on since I was on vacation, I've been a little behind on this, so I don't have a uh, a guest for next time uh, for next week. But uh, that will be that will be a post that will happen um, on Instagram. Um, so just remember to uh, like this video as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on either Spotify playlists or Apple Podcast or Spotify or Apple Podcasts or both whatever you're feeling, be adventurous. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I hope you all, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And thank you again, James, for doing this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.